Hey guys, what's going on? Inception here and welcome to another video. Today's going to be another discussion video as we normally do. Uh, today's going to be a discussion of whether or not icons have ruined FIFA Ultimate Team in general because ever since their inclusion, uh, they've been seeing the game quite a lot. A lot of people have these cards and now the higher divisions kind of consist of them uh, pretty often as you guys seen from those certain teams that I faced in Division 1s uh, and so on and so forth. So basically the short answer uh, to what I'm going to give people is no, icons have not ruined FIFA. I think the reason why people think that icons have ruined FIFA is because of the way that, uh, you know, FIFA Ultimate Team revolves itself, right? The way that EA has made the game mode, right? The way that EA has made the game mode, it makes a lot of people feel that way because the game is completely meta-oriented. For me personally, right, I think that the icons... And all these like really high tier players should be the type of players that you want to strive towards getting the more you play the game. But there should be more of a collection aspect to the game, right? So, uh, you know, for instance, it shouldn't be it shouldn't be the case. Like if I play the game a lot, I should be able to collect them all by the end of the game. Like if I play like six thousand games, five thousand games by the end of FIFA, I expect to have most of the good cards in the game through playing the game. That's just my opinion. A lot of people won't see it that way, but that's a lot of games. I used to play like 4,000, 5,000 games back in the day, and the only way for me to get really good teams at that time was when uh, the uh, the price fixing was no longer a thing. So you had to wait like two months afterwards for the players' prices to really, really decrease uh, for you to be able to enjoy the game with a bunch of like team of the season cards, so on and so forth, right? Uh, but with icons, yeah, you know, I, I want to be able to get the Patrick Vieiras, the Ronaldinho's, the Ronaldo's. These are guys that I used to watch when I was younger, and I would love to play with them. The reason why people see icons as a nuisance to the game mode is because it is meta-oriented. But that's on EA, right, to not make the game meta-oriented, to make people use different types of cards, right? Like, for instance, it's cool that these cards exist in the game. You want to be able to use them, and they're childhood heroes of yours, right? Especially someone like Ronaldinho, right? But... EA needs to make the game Ultimate Team more open, right? More, it makes you more prone to using different types of cards so that your team doesn't consist of a full icon, full team of the year squad. I fully expect that for you to grind towards for Division Rivals because Division Rivals is, is tiered based. So me being in Division 1, if I come up against those teams knowing that I'm playing competitive FIFA, that's completely fine because I know that that's how the, that's the state of the game. It's always going to be like that. Competitive FIFA will always be like that. The players are going to people are going to want the best players to play in the in the competitive uh, game mode, and I'm completely fine with that. What I'm not fine with is that we have that game mode, but then we don't have a regular game mode, right? So that's the only game mode you can play. Nobody wants to comp against full team of the year, full full icon teams all the time when we're in division rivals. We it would be fine, like I said. Excuse me. For competitive FIFA, if it's in the game, in the game mode, okay? That's the only thing. Because icons are cool because they're, the, they're obviously they're going to be the best types of cards in the game. Patrick Vieira and Hullet, no one touches those two uh, being played as your CDM. You can even use Rude Hullet as a cam if you really want to. And he'll probably be a god in that position because of the defensive stats and so on and so forth, right? So, I don't think, I don't think the inclusion of... <clears throat> icons has been a bad thing. It's only a bad thing because of the way that FIFA revolves their content, right? It's all competitive based. That's the only reason why you see it so often nowadays because there's no incentive to use different cards, right? They have to add challenges in the game where basically like they need to have like high tier challenges, mid tier challenges, low tier challenges where the high tier challenges, even if it's still going to be paid to win, because I understand EA is a business, they're going to they're gonna make their money. They're never going to change this format of wanting to make money out of this, out of this game, right? It's never going to change. But they can make the format fun, where in the high tier rewards, you still need to get maybe like high, really, really sought after informs or, or high icon players or team of the years. And you need to put them in a team for you to be able to unlock really, really cool cards. Like they just have to create a concept where people want to use God squads, people want to use the mid tier players, and people want to use the low tier players and just have fun with the game, right? Like I said, I'm totally cool with people using the meta in division rivals because that makes sense in any competitive game you play everyone will always play to the meta but you need to especially in a football oriented game we're not even like call of duty even has pubs right but we're talking in a football oriented game where there are thousands of players hundreds of players from the elite teams that you want to try out that you just cannot because the game completely revolves around the meta 
that needs to change okay there needs to be an incentive to want to get the high tier players and you know really grind because that's where the grind aspect should come from the grind aspect should be grinding towards these god squads so that you can use them in division rivals to get better awards right that's the incentive there and then the other incentive is as you're playing division rivals as you're playing these game modes you also can collect cards from the mid tiers like it doesn't even matter like if i get players from fc porto like swaj right uh the striker from fc porto you know, getting a special version of his card would be cool through playing the game and getting stuff in the game, right? That's that's the important thing. So I, I get where some people are coming from saying that it's a nuisance in the game, but it really isn't because it's cool that they're in the game because you get to use them, you know? It's just not cool because they only have competitive in this game, right? If you have an open matchmaking where you can use Raul and Ronaldo in the same team... Well, no, I'm not going to say Raul and Ronaldo because that's a very poor example, but... You know, if you use, like, one legend in the team, but then you're using, like, a bunch of other players in the team, like, you're using, I don't know, like, uh, just players at the top of my head, like, Kondogbia and stuff, and you're just, like, rotating around that and just having fun with the game. That's what's important, right? So, I don't think it's a nuisance in the game. I only think it's a nuisance in the game right now, because those are the only players you want to get for the high-tier divisions. That is the only reason why. Uh, another discussion that I wanted to talk about uh, was in the last video, someone was mentioning to me how... Um, if you have a lower tier team, uh, if you have a lower tier team and someone else has a higher tier team, uh, the guy with the higher tier team is, is at a disadvantage. People need to stop saying these things because this is not what's going to help fix our game. Okay. If you used, if you ever used a high tier team, like I have in the world cup mode, right. And 20 and, and when, and last year's game. I don't like these comments, man, because the first time I've ever used a full meta squad, it doesn't matter what I do with my bench because the gameplay will decide what, to do, what it's going to do by itself. When I got to use these teams, when I got to finally use the Ronaldinho's, the Pele's, the Ronaldo's, I don't need anybody telling me that those, those cards don't make a difference because they made a huge difference, right? We're talking about a difference of when I was playing it on the Xbox or whatever it was, uh... Or, or the PlayStation, I think I was, no, it was on the Xbox I was playing on the main and the PlayStation afterwards. On the PlayStation account, when I was just getting the cards through playing the game, I went like 8-1. and one. I actually lost one of the games. But when I had it on Xbox, I never lost a single game in the World Cup tournament mode. Not one, and I went over like 40 or 50 games, right? So it makes a huge difference. I don't need this mentality of people saying... Oh, if you have a lower tier team, if you come up against a higher tier team, the higher tier team would, would be downgraded. No, that's not the case at all. And we're going to be talking about bronze benching in another video. And bronze, bench, bronze benching by itself is bullshit. And I'm, I'm going to get into that in a bit. People wonder why I use when I, why I bronze bench. The only reason why I bronze bench is because, one, I don't have a second team to put that gold squad um, in the team so that I can switch between two different teams because I used to do it back in the day switch between two different teams and regain the stamina that way and two every time I'm in my twitch chat and I don't use bronze bench people are always like oh your game plays shit because of that right so I do it literally only because of my twitch chat well we'll get into the bronze benching conversation in another video but basically the the short form of it is basically bronze bench does fuck all right you're still gonna match up against god squads those two god squads that i showed you guys i was bronze benching during those times people don't bronze bench because of that they bronze bench because they think it is a mentality that your players will have less handicap which just is not the case it's not the case the gameplay will decide if it's good or bad i've had i've had teams uh, in the past where my rating was so high and my gameplay was amazing and I wasn't there was no handicap or scripting or momentum that's just inconsistent gameplay guys there's no such thing as those three things okay if your gameplay changes it literally does not matter about the score it just changes that's it okay I, I had to talk about this because the conspiracies in this community sometimes they 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 get to me right um but yeah, if you come up against a high tier squad, you're coming up against a high tier squad. It's going to be harder to face those guys. They have all the, sp the stats that make them good. When I last year's game for FIFA 18, the moment I got Ronaldo and Patrick Vieira, that's when I got top 100. Those two cars, just those two, that's when I got that's when I got top 100. Not last year's game, excuse me. Uh, the first year FIFA uh, Foot Champs came out. I think it was in FIFA 16 or 17. Uh, the moment I got Patrick Vieira and Ronaldo. <clears throat> made a huge difference the moment i got ronaldo back in fifa 15 oh my god like these are two or three players 
if you get a full team, like I told you guys, in the World Cup mode, I felt, and, and it's funny because even with the full God Squad in the World Cup mode, my two CDMs were still uh, Goretzka and Mateus or something like that. Because I don't think Patrick Vieira and Hullet were in those, right? So even at that point in the game, I was like, I still don't have a full meta team, right? I still don't have a full meta team because, because I'm missing people who are perfect essentially in those positions. But everybody, everything else is perfect. When I was using like Pele's and the Maradona's and the Ronaldo's and all, it's, it's, I felt like when I was holding the controller, it was literally unfair. I felt it was so unfair. It's because the thing is, right, is that a lot of people had God squads in the World Cup mode because the way that the coins are transferred over, you spend like 1 million coins, 2 million coins, you can have a God squad, which I don't know why people hated that. The game is, the, there's three months left of the game. People in the Kiva community sometimes don't know what they want, okay? There was three or four months left of the game. Why would you not want to have a God Squad? Why do you want to grind for a, a new team again in the World Cup mode? The World Cup mode was good because it allowed you to use whatever player you wanted for the remainder of the year. I don't know why people didn't have like this concept in their head when that mode came out. Because I'm telling you guys this right now. When the mode came out, people realized, oh, it was so easy to collect all the cards. I was like, what are you guys talking about? There is three to four months left of the game. Let us use whatever the fuck we want. There's a lot of things, guys, no offense to people in the community, but there's a lot of things in the community that people say that it, it just, it, for me, it, it triggers me, man. It does. Like, especially with that World Cup mode, like, we got to use whatever players we wanted because it was so cheap to get everything. Because 2 million coins in last year's game was, was easy to get if you keep, well, it's not easy to get nowadays because their, their gameplay content is shit, right? But in last year's game, you played foot champs, you played divisions, you, you kept on gaining, gaining, gaining your coins. You can afford 2 million coins. Like, just sell your team that you played only two or three months for and then go play the world's cup mode right i liked it because i could use whatever i want i don't want to have to restart a whole team and then have to grind for it again i want it it's the last three or four months of the game let me use whoever the hell i want right i don't know so it's just some of these things happen and for me it just it just triggers me right but uh yeah that's pretty much it for the discussion i just want to talk about whether icons ruin the game it didn't the only reason why it's shit right now it's because of the it's because of the meta in the game. The meta is to only get meta players. That's the only reason why people hate them so much, uh, and because they can't afford them. Obviously, because people spend a shit ton of money on the game. Because you have to nowadays, and that's very understandable. To be fair, um, in regards to like having these players and whatnot. But yeah, I just wanted to throw my two cents in there uh, to give you guys my opinion on the whole situation. You guys know that I don't bullshit. I just say what I think, and uh, that's pretty much it. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video today. I'll see you guys for the next one. Peace out, dudes. Let me know which kind of video you guys you guys want to see. I have discussion videos because I don't know what else to really do, to be honest, uh, until EA releases content that's actually worthwhile. So, yeah, I'll catch you guys later. Peace out, dudes. Love you guys.